Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa salatu wassalamu ala nabiyyina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wasallam wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in wa ala kulli man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawmiddin. Wa ba'da a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ya ayyuhallazina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And again, thank you uh, to MCHK, the whole team, the people supporting and sponsoring the activities and uh, for bringing up uh, various event classes, reminders, and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept uh, the effort of every one of us, those who are contributing, those who are encouraging it, those who are attending, and those who intend to do any one of those and they're not able to do for one reason or the other. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Inshallah, tonight uh, we will remind one another about events or natural disasters that are happening around the world. As the brother mentioned in the introduction, it's not something uh, that has started in our time or in our generation only. These are uh, natural phenomena that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed upon uh, the people living on this earth. So how do we view natural phenomena? Whether these are uh, typhoons as we've seen recently in Hong Kong, we've seen uh, devastating or very damaging earthquake uh, with tsunami in Indonesia uh, over the past few days and we see other areas like uh, Japan, uh, the Philippines and many other places around the world are uh, affected by natural disasters. How do we Muslim, how do a believer understand and take these uh, natural phenomena? Uh, to start by we see these uh, disasters happening, we realize how weak we are, how fragile as human beings we are. We are not able to control these phenomena in the least way, whether it's a strong wind, whether it's flood, whether it's uh, heavy rain, or anything that is controlled directly by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us how fragile we are. The smallest adverse condition in nature will have, will have a very huge impact in our life. And uh, you see the tsunami that happened in Indonesia, for example, uh, over 1,000 people died. And uh, for within very short time if mankind were able to bring technology to bring our machinery to bring our intellect to stop these things we will have stopped them but it is to show that it doesn't matter how much effort we put how much knowledge we have how much uh, reasoning we put sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send signals to mankind through these natural disasters. Let's look back in the Quran and in the Sunnah uh, what the Prophet sallallahu described about these uh, natural disasters. What happened to previous generation before us, previous nation before the nation of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa uh, No doubt in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that he is the one who has created everything. So, and he is not only creating everything, but he is measuring it. Everything is created in due proportion. Subhanallah. And that's what Allah said in the Quran. He said, وَمَا خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتَ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا لَا إِبِينَ he said, we have not created what is in the heaven and what is in the earth and what is between them for play. 
So everything that has been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a purpose. We will understand some of them, some of them we will remain ignorant about them. So when we see these natural disasters, when we see these phenomena happening, we may understand what is the cause, we may study and bring some reasoning, but we may not understand also. Because we are so limited in our knowledge, there are many things that is beyond our understanding. So the creator of everything, including us, is telling us that everything that has been created has a purpose, is not for mere play. So what are the natural phenomena or disasters that happened in previous, uh, during previous time to previous nation? Uh, natural disasters like uh, uh, earthquake is mentioned in the Quran as a Rajfa. And uh, flooding mentioned in the Quran as a Tufan. And then we have uh, other natural disasters like uh, what we name them today like typhoon or cyclone or whatever, hurricane, tornado. They have various names but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called them in the Quran Hasib. Hasib. And uh, these are all documented in the Quran in different places. Throughout, Allah is telling us the stories of previous nations and how these natural phenomena were sent to them as a punishment. This is one of the things we will start pondering. When we see something happening around us, a natural phenomena that we, is beyond our control, we should start asking ourselves, is this a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is this a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Throughout, I mean, uh, before we finish, inshallah, we will try to give some answer. How to understand these phenomena. For example, uh, we know uh, people of all time, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send a prophet and a messenger to them, they deny this prophet and messenger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a punishment to them as a result and uh, on request of the Prophet himself. We have the story of the Prophet mentioned in Surah al -Ghassas. Every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to their nation, to his brothers, we send so and so. And he conveyed the message, he called them on Tawheed to abandon the sin in which they were engaged to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then they persist in committing that sin and the messenger or prophet who was sent to them will find no hope for them. He will say, Oh Allah, you are witness that I have conveyed the message to them, yet they are belying me. They tell him that I'm a liar. They tell him that I'm a sorcerer. They are wanting to harm me. Remember the story of Prophet Lut wassalam, for example when he conveyed the message of Allah to the people that they should abandon the uh, sin, unnatural sin they were engaged into, they started attacking him. They say, if you don't keep quiet and leave us alone, we will stone you to death or we will chase you out of this city. And uh, many other prophets came in the same line. Prophet Nuh when he conveyed the message to the nation, to his people, for 900 years plus. The people are stubbornly uh, holding to the idol worship. And they refuse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then, he made dua to Allah. He said, now Allah, I'm hopeless. They are passing on this a disbelief from one generation to the other. If you leave any one of them on the face of the earth, they will be corrupting it all the time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, you are the arbitrator. You are the one who is just. Bring your justice. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent flood to punish the people as a result. 
and these are all documented in the Quran, as we said. But these natural disasters were restricted to a particular nation and at a particular time. And uh, the messengers were among them to deliver the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the people persist on refusing it, then the messenger will call for the punishment of Allah to come. What is happening in our time? The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told us that he had made supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for three things. And Allah has granted two of them. And the other one, Allah has not granted it. And what are these three things? He said, I have made supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that my nation will not kill one another. We will not destroy one another. We will not take up weapons to kill one another. And uh, this was not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see Muslims going after another group of Muslims, killing them for reasons that themselves they don't know most of the time. And another, the Prophet وسلم, said, I have made a supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that my nation will not be destroyed as previous nations have been destroyed as a whole. Uh, remember the time of Prophet Nuh والسلام, when the flood came, it did not spare anybody in the region. Everyone was affected by the flood. Believers, disbelievers, everyone. But then the Prophet وسلم, when he made this supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah accepted that he will not kill us, all of us at once, just as he did to previous nation. Otherwise, all the condition of those previous nations, the sins they were involved into, these conditions are met in our present time now. No uh, sin greater committed during those time is not uh, being uh, spared at our own time today. What we see, the main reason uh, Prophet Nuh was sent is to call people back to Tawheed, to abandon idol worship. Do we have in our time people who are worshipping idols? Yes, certainly. People are worshipping pieces of wood. They went to the forest with an axe, they cut it, shape it, put in the corner of their house, bowing down to it instead of bowing down to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People are worshipping animals. Animals from which you get some milk or some other benefit. People are worshipping them. And uh, people are worshipping uh, mountains. Any other for which previous nations have been uh, destroyed is being committed in our time. In the case of Prophet Lut, it was not official then, but now we are making it official and announcing it to the whole world to know that yes, Mr. So and so is married to Mr. So and so. Subhanallah. At the time of those prophets, they were doing it, but not in an official way. In our own time today, it's open. And if you speak against it, you become the enemy. You become somebody who is not tolerant, someone who cannot live in a multicultural society, somebody who cannot do and so and so, and you have a label with you. And for these same sins, previous nations have been wiped out completely. The case of Prophet Lut Jibril was sent to this nation. What he did is to overturn the earth over them. Completely take it side, upside down. But in our time, we persist and we keep going. Natural disasters can be seen as blessing in a certain way and can be a punishment in another way. If we look at the same natural resources Allah SWT is using, in some ways, if they go beyond 
a limit that we can bear, it becomes a punishment. If it's only in a measured way, it becomes a blessing for us. And uh, if we compare uh, two set of ayat in the Quran, we'll find that in one set, it's used as a punishment. In another set, it's used as a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Water, for example, and the wind. Allah mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Zariyat, and in Surah al ankabut In these two surah, Allah is telling us that he has sent water and wind as a punishment to a group of people. For example, Wafi in in uh, Surah Zariyat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wafi Wafi Ibadina is Arsalna alayhim Rihan. Wafi Adin. Wafi Adin. Wafi Adin is Arsalna alayhim Riha al Azim. Alim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending this as a punishment to those people who were disobeying the prophet to, that was sent to the ad. Who is the prophet who was sent to the ad? Prophet Hud, alayhi salatu wassalam. And then, in another setting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent rain from the sky and he said this is a blessing, this is glad tidings for the people. And uh, he said, وَأَرْسَلْنَا وَأَرْسَلْنَا رِيَاهَا I cannot see this one, sorry. <laughs> here we send this wind as a glad tiding as a, a, what is called as good news for the people and within it he sent water sending rain from the water you are drinking and when rain comes it's not just uh, for drinking it's also revived the earth through it we plant we do farming from which we get our sustenance subhanallah and uh, in one set of ayat allah is using the same uh, resources for punishment in another set is using them for for blessing and then the next thing we will have in mind when we see this situation we will ask ourselves is this a punishment or why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is allowing this kind of suffering? Why Allah is sending these disasters and make people suffer? When we are following the news, we see people are exposed to uh, the tsunami that has happened recently. And uh, you see dead people and other people trapped under the rubble. And the survivors, they don't have food. Everything has been wiped away. And you see children crying for food, crying for water. Why this suffering is happening? This is the same questions believers and disbelievers will have in their mind. But we have a different view, different position as believers compared to the disbelievers. Believers will see this as an occasion as a chance for them to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will see it as a warning that has been sent to them. These believers will start then saying if there was a God, if there was Allah, this kind of situation will never happen. This is the way the complete different views these believers and believers have toward uh, this kind of situation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran in Surah al fatir He said, if Allah were to punish the people according to what they deserve, He will not have lived on the back of the earth a single living creature. If Allah was to punish for every sin that we are committing, He will not leave one single living creature on the face of the earth. Everyone will be wiped out. Because everyone is committing sin one way or the other. But then he said, but he gave them respite for a stated time. Allah will give people time to either repent 
or to continue transgressing against the limit he has set in a way that they will have no excuse anymore. In the sight of Allah, you have been given enough chance to forget and uh, seek for forgiveness for the wrong you are doing and go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through seeking repentance and for forgiveness. But then people will stubbornly keep going until Allah will seize them and he will surely caution them. He said when their terms expire, verily Allah has in his sight all his servants. Is there anybody who has been created who is not a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No, there is none. It's either you are willingly submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you are unwillingly submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this brings us to talk, to, uh, to talk about two aspects of believing in Allah. The natural laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that everybody is complied to I mean, everybody must comply to, and the physical, uh, the physical law of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. These laws, you are not given any chance or any choice about them. You must obey them. And then you have the moral laws of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, where you are given a choice whether you will do it or not. The physical laws. These are laws that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in within ourselves, for example, or in our surrounding. For example, when you feel hungry, when you feel thirsty, when you feel sleepy, when you feel tired, these are things you have no control over. When you are hungry, you must look for something to eat. When you are thirsty, you must look for something to drink. And you will not say, no, I will not drink. You can't deny them. But for the uh, moral laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people will have a choice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to pray. They say, no, I will not pray. Allah orders us to give in charity. People will say, no, if Allah wills, he will feed them. I don't have to look after these myself. You are given a choice in this. But for the natural laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we mentioned, nobody has a choice over them. Nobody decides where they will be born, where they will die, when they will die. You have no choice over this. These are decrees of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that everybody must comply to. So, the physical laws, when they are broken, we see consequences. This is when we stop looking after our environment in an appropriate way. It causes us natural disasters. Sometimes it is our own doing. It is not just uh, because Allah is sending this as a punishment, but sometimes we go and look for it. Sometimes we are causing it most of the time. So. When we study the cause and effect in these natural uh, disasters, we can minimize the effect of these disasters because it's caused by our own hands. Uh, that's why Allah SWT again mentioned in the Quran that uh, corruption has spread in the land. What is spreading corruption in the land is the hand of man. This is documented in the Quran. He said, corruption has appeared on the land and on the sea as an outcome of what men's hands have brought. How do we bring corruption on the earth, on the land? Corruption here does not mean only when you are bribing somebody. It means when you are damaging the laws Allah SWT has put in place. It's when you are causing uh, trouble to other people by your own doing. We see people fighting over natural resources and while doing so they're causing wars between nations because of greed. Everybody wants to have control of a portion of this, a portion of that. As a result, 
they cause thousands or millions of people to go hungry, people to die. And this is all because of our own greed. So, and then he said, we will let them taste the evil of some of their own doing. So, when these natural phenomena start striking now, we will start suffering. We will start crying out, Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help us. We are in this situation, we are in that situation. You see desperate people, desperate situation. And sometimes very, very sad when you see these kids taken out of uh, these uh, areas where parents have died. And then these become, I mean, they become orphaned. You see them, you can help to drop tears because of sadness. It's all due to man's own doing. But then, when these calamities are happening, will we say that it is only the righteous people who will be affected or it will affect everyone else? The answer is found in the, the uh, I mean, in a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, reported in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad Rahimahullah. Our mother Umm Salama radiallahu anha said, I asked the Messenger of Allah وسلم, when if sin become, will there people be punished uh, after when natural calamities are happening? The Prophet وسلم, replied, yes. She asked, will be there righteous people among them? He said, even if they are righteous people, calamity will still strike them. And uh, the hadith is a bit long, we just got it to uh, fit our presentation here. He said, I asked them, I asked, when sin, the Prophet Sallallahu said, when sin become rampant, become common, something that is spread, everybody or majority of people are doing, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surely send a punishment upon them. Then ask, O Messenger of Allah, will there not be righteous people among them at the time? The Prophet replied, yes, there will be righteous people. They will face the same fate. But what will be the difference is that on the day of judgment, those people who are righteous in that uh, situation who are being affected, who pass away during these calamities, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will use that as a mean to increase their rank in the hereafter. See how merciful is Allah. So, when these calamities happen, it's not only the wrongdoers who are affected. The Prophet sallallahu reported in another uh, narration, he said, in the old time, before, meaning before his coming, in previous nation, there was a group of people living in a city, uh, among them a righteous man uh, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he saw that sins had become rampant in the city, he moved away from the city. He secluded himself in the mountain. He said, I'm going away from you people so that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is punishing you, I'm already out. I'm not among you. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the angels uh, to come and destroy this city. And then the angel was saying, Oh Allah, among them there is a righteous servant. What would, should we do about it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, strike starting from there. So, it's not only the people who are engaged in the transgression who will be affected, but also those who are, are righteous. And this righteous man, inshallah, Allah will put him among those who are, uh, whose ranks are increased on the day of judgment. But in this life, you are affected equally. So, we cannot sit down and distribute uh, these calamities when they strike a nation that we are inclined to like, we say, no, 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 they deserve it. We say, you don't know the type of sins they do, you can't see what they're doing around this, they're doing that and that. Or if it is inclined, if it is in a nation that we are inclined to like, we say, oh, that's so sad. 
How can it be possible? They don't deserve these things. They are righteous people. This year during the Hajj, there was a typhoon. When people were in Mina, have you seen it? And uh, what would you think? What was your state of feeling when you see that happening? The peak of the Hajj. Typhoon is coming, wiping away the tent and bringing dust on the people standing there who f left everything behind just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can we say this was a punishment to them? How do you interpret it? How do you understand it? Is it a punishment? Is it a test? How do you understand it? It's a better. <laughs> <laughs> so, when we see a calamity happening as believers, we must understand that we don't have any revelation. None of us receive revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to confirm whether this is a punishment, whether this is a blessing. You don't distribute these things using your own cards. This is done only by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with reveal message to a specific prophet. We confirm the people who were affected by the flood during the time of Prophet Nuh they were punished because Allah mentioned it. It's recorded in the Quran. The Prophet commented it. But now we don't have any way to interpret these uh, calamities with certainty. We only think because Allah told us the stories of previous nations so that we learn the lesson from them. So from that perspective, we say it could be a punishment. But in another way, we said it could be a test for us who are not affected by these calamities. How do we respond when we see suffering? This is, again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not testing the people who are affected, but he is testing those who are outside the situation. Allah has given you the power, the wealth, the means to react and do something about it. You just sit back and cross your, your, your arms waiting for someone else to do. What did you do? What was your reaction? When you see those orphans coming out of that situation after someone has dropped bombs in a city, you sit back and say, no, no, they deserve it because of one or two people in that nation a war is breaking the innocent people are affected and then we sit back and say no 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 we we don't do anything someone else is doing united nations should do this this country should do that they have all the money from such and such resources they should do it why not why are they not doing this? They're sitting here, they're doing that, they're playing this game. You distribute the blame to everyone else but you. You are not responsible. So, when this situation happens, a Muslim should always remember one of the articles of faith. That is the divine decree of Allah SWT. And we understand this in four aspects. Number one, whatever happened, we know it is in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing happens except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows it and uh, he not just knows it, he has written it. It will happen. The first thing Allah has created according to um, most scholars is the pen. When Allah created the pen, he ordered it to write. And to write what? Anything and everything that will happen from that day until the end of time. So everything is written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only written by Allah, he also wills it will happen and he orders it to happen. Subhanallah. 
This is why a believer will understand that anything that befall him, it is a decree from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the whole of mankind get together to benefit anybody, if Allah doesn't will it, if doesn't order it, nobody will bring him any, any benefit. If the whole of mankind get together to harm somebody and Allah does not will it and he does not order it, it will never happen. And the case in hand is Prophet Ibrahim والسلام, The whole nation was girded against him. They want to harm him. Allah SWT protected him and nothing happened to him. And he kept on saying, Hasbi Allah wa al wakil. Allah is sufficient for me as a protector. And this is the attitude of a believer. Whenever you see a situation beyond your control, beyond your capacity, you put your reliance in Allah SWT. Allah, you must know if Allah wills this to happen, you take it willingly. This is very difficult. A Muslim will observe a situation happening on someone else, they say, this is the will of Allah SWT. But when it happens on you, you have difficulties accepting this is the will of Allah. When it's happening on other people, you say, oh, Allah has decided this will be like that. May Allah protect them. When it happens on you, you have difficulties surrendering that and giving it back to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala by saying, "Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun." And then, not only Allah knows and He has written it, He wills and orders it, and it is also created by Allah. Whether this is viewed as something good or viewed as something bad. In so many situations, because of our limitation, because of our limited understanding, we start making judgment. We say, this is really bad. This is evil. Evil in our understanding. But how about the rest of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is also living on this earth? Do they view this situation in the same way? Maybe not. So, Allah has created everything that is in the heaven and in the earth and what is between them. So, you cannot deny when something happens, if it is beyond your understanding and wisdom, you must give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his attribute of knowledge, his attribute of al-hakim, he is the one who is wise. Allah has the control on these things, so you give it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is our response to uh, natural disasters? How do we respond? A believer will have one attitude. Number one is to take whatever worldly measure you can do, and number two is to respond to it with prayers. Umu Aisha radiallahu anha reported that whenever there is wind blowing, the Prophet sallallahu become anxious. He become agitated. He become worried. And when the wind stop, he will become joyful. He will become happy. He will come out of anxiety. Why? When they asked him this situation, he said, who knows whether this will be a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether this wind is coming with a message from Allah. So when we see this situation as a believer, number one step you will make is to make dua, may Allah make it beneficial. When it's raining, you say oh Allah make it a beneficial rain. Because you don't know what is coming with it, how much rain it will be when it will stop. Maybe it will continue until it flood the whole uh, area or the whole land. Even though we think we have the observatory, we have this technology to measure it, but who knows? 
how many times we have prediction of typhoon it will be signal number so and so it will hit so and so at the end of the day nothing or at the end of the day is worse than predicted so it can be on both ways you can't rely on this because it's not controlled by us it's controlled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has the full control of everything so we should ask ourselves could it be a punishment if it is then we should rush to repent a Muslim will seize every occasion to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking for forgiveness because you don't know in which state you will you will die you don't know whether this particular thing will be the cause of your death and we said death has no warning sign for anyone it can come and strike at any moment anything can be the cause of death you see people talking and they start choking in one time and then next minute dead no more so anything can cause death by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when you think this can be a punishment it's a time for you to repent could it be a trial or a test we work hard with patience we observe what is necessary to pass through that trial because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he will not burden any soul beyond the capacity of that soul so what you need to do is to remain patient you will carry it you will go through it by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so don't renounce your belief and your faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of that particular test or trial if that cause you to renounce your faith if that cause you to uh, go away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then it's become a punishment as, it, as uh, one brother mentioned earlier so it is a test for you you will pass the test or fail failing means the difficulty will drive you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you pass meaning that this will bring you back to Allah he says subhanallah I almost died and I remember I need to account of my deed in front of my Lord so I need to prepare myself what have you prepared are you ready it doesn't take much to be ready it doesn't take money all it takes is to sincerely repent and follow the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as instructed by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it's simple you don't have to go around fetching it somewhere else it's in the book of Allah it's in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his action as understood by the companion so the believers will face suffering with repentance and good deeds when you see this situation happening if you are not affected you will engage in charity in helping those who are affected how you can help them by your physical means you are fit to go and help lift up the rubble and take out the the uh, the people under the, the debris you do that you have the money to finance to help to get them food water clothing and shelter you do that no you are not able to do any of that you raise awareness you are not able to do that raise your hands in dua make dua for them pray at night seek Allah help for those who are suffering it doesn't cost much so the believers will face these difficulties with patience and prayers the disbelievers will face these difficulties with rejection and anger they will be angry at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they will reject whatever was there linking them between I mean linking them to Allah they will say if there was a God this will never happen subhanallah out of your limited things because of a simple calamity you rejecting the creator of the heaven and the earth 
So Muslims should face these with charity and faith. And uh, we should see them as whether it's a test or a punishment, we should still engage as much as possible in the, our response to support those who are affected. In a very uh, strong hadith, hadith good see. What is the difference between hadith good see and the other type of hadith? Hadith good see is the type of hadith when the Prophet ﷺ will say, Allah has told me, Allah has instructed me, Allah has ordered me. Instead of him instructing the people and uh, giving him information, in Hadith Gudusi, he will say, Allah has told me, and then he will relate what Allah has told him. Or he will say, Allah has ordered me to... And then he will relate what Allah has ordered him. It's almost like the ayat of the Quran. But then in this hadith he said, uh, On the day of judgment Allah will say, O son of Adam, I was sick. You did not visit me. If Allah tells you on the day of judgment that he was sick, you did not visit him. How would you respond to that? You say, Allah, you are sick. This is something you cannot conceive as a Muslim. Allah, the one who created health and death, health and sickness, he is telling you he was sick. And then he will say, Oh my Lord, how could I visit you when you are the Lord of the world? How can you visit Allah? He said, by going to the Kaaba. Because when you are there, you are in the house of Allah. No, that's not what it means. And then he will say, Do you know that my servant so and so was sick and you did not visit him? And did you know, know that if you visited him, you will have visited me? SubhanAllah. The value of visiting a sick person, somebody who is a believer, you visit them, regardless. Because the hadith is not mentioning whether he's a believer or disbeliever. Somebody, you hear this person is sick. When we are sick, what is the condition of a sick person? They become powerless. Everything around them become standstill. It's not moving anymore. Their life stops at a certain point. Anything they need. They are in need of anything and everything. So unless somebody gives them a push, sometimes they cannot even clean themselves going to the washroom. They need help. So if you do a single effort just to visit a sick person, that is an act pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you have visited him. SubhanAllah. And then the hadith continue is uh, is very long. I will, I won't read it all, but I will just give you a hint of. Uh, he said, Allah will say, "Oh, son of Adam, I ask you for food, and you fed me not." Wow, this is another striking statement by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah is asking you to give him food, to feed him. Does Allah eat? Does he drink? Does he sleep? No. But then we understand it is for his servant. When you are feeding the people, it is as you have fed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the analogy. So in this, the hadith continue to the end. And then the Prophet said, if we act upon these things we are earning the reward of giving these things to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave it to us in the first place so you remember in the Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Man hasana. who is the one who will loan to Allah a beautiful loan 
Does Allah need loan? Who give you the wealth? The wealth is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But from that he is saying, give me loan. What loan you give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by feeding the needy, the poor. Giving the zakat. Giving the sadaqah. That's what we, we can do as uh, Muslims. As believers. So disasters can be uh, also the sign of the hour as the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, mentioned. He said multiple natural disasters toward the end of the time is the sign of coming of the hour. What hour we are talking about? The last day. What is the last day? It's a day in which there is no sunset. There is no maghrib. It's a day when there will be no more alternation of the day and the night. It will be maybe a day continuously for the believers, but a night continuously for the disbelievers. It's a time when you don't have any more the movement of this, the earth around the sun. This will come to a stop. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold all the creation to account. Every one of us will return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will give account of what we did. Remember the five questions uh, the Prophet sallallahu said, nobody will move on the day of judgment an inch or one step except Allah will ask you for five things. What are those five things? It's the only examination where you have the exam questions, the papers already right in front of you for years. For those who live long, like we are now, some of us are over 40, some are around 25, 30. Long enough for you to master those questions and know the answer. Is there any excuse for any one of us? For any exam you have in our life here, you only need a few days to be ready. few hours to be ready. But in that, Allah is giving us a lifetime to be ready for these questions. You must know them, prepare, so that when you are asked, you know what is the answer. Calamities as a sign of the hour, as we mentioned, um, the Prophet ﷺ told us when Jibreel والسلام, came to him, he said, uh, What is Islam? What is Iman? What is, uh, uh, what is Islam? What is Iman? And what is Islam? And then he asked him, what, When will be the hour? When will be the day of judgment, for example? Uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, the one who is asked and the one who asks, they are both ignorant about it. You don't know, I don't know. But the sign of this, he gave major signs and minor signs. Among the minor signs leading to the day of judgment, leading to the hour, is these natural calamities, disasters happening. You will see people dying in masses. And there is no one day that will pass except we will see or hear in the news or we will see in our surrounding that people are dying in big numbers. Big numbers, not one and two. One, two people dying. No, masses of people. You see a lot of people dying in one time. 50, 100 people, 90 people dead. There is no one day that pass if you are following the news except you will see this thing. Or for some of us, it's happening in our surrounding. And a lot of people don't even know what is the cause. A lot of people are affected by this. They are killed by people who don't know why they are killing them. So these are signs. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu rightly predicted and uh, these are uh, reminders for every one of us that we should be prepared. You should be ready so that whenever death 
teach reaches you you are returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a submissive heart because Allah mentioned in the Quran there will be a day when nothing will benefit you except a heart that is submissive to him so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people who will turn back to him in a very submissive way. People who have worshipped him throughout uh, our life in a way that is pleasing to him. And may he grant us uh, forgiveness and uh, jannah. Amin. Amin. This is the summary of uh, what we said. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, used to say, uh, this is very important as a supplication. He said, O oh Allah, do not let our heart deviate after you have guided us. Subhanallah. Rabbana la tuzih ulubana ba'da iz hadaitana wa hablana min ladunka rahma inna kanta al-wahhab. He used to make another supplication found in the hadith. He said, O oh Allah, make our last day the best. Or make our best action our last. Why? Because he, Rasulullah sallallahu said, you will be resurrected in the state upon which you die. You will be resurrected in the state upon which you die. And if somebody dies in a I mean, good ending. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will resurrect that person in the same position. If somebody dies in a bad situation, they will be resurrected in that position too. So that's why Prophet Yusuf ﷺ made a very striking du'a that is recorded in the Quran. He said, "Rabbana," he said, uh, "Rabbana tawafani Musliman." Wahid ni masalim. He didn't say Rabbana. Tawafani Musliman. Wahid ni masalim. Bissalim. He said, take me back as a Muslim and join me back and join me with the righteous in the hereafter. Subhanallah. And this is nothing more than achieving success in this life and achieving success in the hereafter. If Allah takes you back as a Muslim, it means that you have fulfilled your purpose in life. If He joins you in the hereafter with the righteous, that is the ultimate success. May Allah grant us jannah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free. We have uh, brothers who will help to contribute in answering them. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Five the five questions you uh, said. The five questions the brother is asking what are the five questions uh, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in an authentic narration that every son of Adam will be asked on the day of judgment. Uh, one of them is he said in the statement of the in the hadith, he said, On the day of judgment the son of Adam will not move one step except Allah will ask him for five things. And uh, number one Sorry? It's not the prayer. It's your youth. How did you spend it? When you were able to run, jump here, pray, fast, give zakat, walk and give zakat, what did you do? Your health. What did you do with it? Be before you are sick. Be when you are healthy, you are able to perform all the... Uh, Active forms of worship, active forms of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then you will become one day, if you grow old or not even old, some people are affected by a disease at a certain point in their life and they become unhealthy. They cannot now perform these active worship as they are doing. Some people you see them in the masjid, they're sitting in a chair. They will have the same reward of someone who is standing, bowing down and prostrating if they, have, they used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
in the time when they were healthy and uh, now because of a disease, because of a barrier, uh, something blocking them, they will have the same reward. If not, we know the Prophet Sallallahu said, uh, sitting, somebody praying, sitting has half of the reward of someone who is standing to pray. So we know this. So all these things will affect your worship. Uh, number, number three, number three, money. Where did you, how did you earn it? And where did you spend it? SubhanAllah. This is very important. Only money has two aspects. How you earn it and where did you spend it? The Prophet Sallallahu saw in a dream, uh, Prophet Sallallahu or the companion, I can't recall, but I tell you the story so that we learn from it. Uh, one of the companion who is a wealthy man, Abdurrahman bin Auf, radiallahu uh, he said, it's him who had the dream, on the day of judgment, the Prophet Sallallahu has crossed the bridge of Sirat, they are waiting at the gate of Jannah. And the Prophet ﷺ is looking around, he didn't see him. And he's wondering, where is Abdurrahman? Where is he? And suddenly, he came sweating, running and sweating to the Prophet ﷺ. And when the Prophet saw him, he said, Oh Abdurrahman, what happened to you? Where have you been? He said, I swear by Allah, Allah was holding me back, cautioning me about anything and everything about my wealth, about the money I had, how I earn it, where I spend it. Now, we are grabbing money anyhow, anyway, just earn. We forget that we will account for it. How did you earn it? And not only that, when you finish holding it, where did you spend it? Did you spend it in the cause of Allah? Or did you spend it in a place where Allah SWT has forbidden you to? You will answer those questions. And uh, the hadith is uh, uh, knowledge. The last uh, point is your knowledge. Allah SWT has blessed you with certain knowledge. And uh, you didn't use it or you use it. How much knowledge you had and how much did you act upon? Because accumulating knowledge alone is not sufficient. Uh, Iblis is one of the most knowledgeable, but not beneficial knowledge. Not beneficial knowledge. And in our time, we have a lot of students of knowledge who are out there striking fatwas left and right giving permissibility to things that are not permissible and prohibiting things that are permissible by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, abusing knowledge. Allah will surely caution this and every one of us will account how much knowledge you have and how much you acted upon what you know. You don't have to be a scholar to pass the very simple message of Islam to somebody. You don't have to be a scholar knowledgeable in every field of to know how to pray. And when you make mistake in your prayer, how to correct it? These are questions Allah SWT will ask on the Day of Judgment. I'm not making it up. It's in an authentic narration hadith uh, that is uh, very well known. Any other question? Yes, your question, please. I don't like teacher's question, though. Um, so, this is quite a common question. Um, when a calamity strikes, any calamity, whether it's a natural disaster or any calamity at all, how can we determine whether it's a test or a punishment? Or a punishment? A test or a punishment? Right. Uh, this is very important to, to know. Uh, normally, we don't give chance to those who come late to talk. Uh, <laughs> if you 
to get the correct view, according to the scholars, uh, student of knowledge, they give us criteria to understand when these calamities strike, how to interpret them, whether these are uh, punishment or they are a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, if these tests help you to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if this calamity, when it strikes, it takes you from disobedience to obedience, then it was a test, it is a warning. Will you use your intellect? Will you use your reasoning? Do you see? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in the Quran, don't you see? Don't you hear? Don't you listen? Don't you reflect? So we use one of the main purpose the Quran was revealed about is to ponder upon these events. You ponder upon them and it becomes a sign of guidance for you. Then this is a test. It's a sign. But then if is, this calamity comes and then it takes you from middle part, you were not 100% uh, in obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but then after the calamity you deny all the favors of Allah you reject Allah you reject the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you become a disbeliever Billah, or you renounce faith then this is a punishment because the person will remain in that state until death will strike them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cast them in hell so basically if the test find you in goodness or in disobedience it brings you to more goodness or to obedience it is a test a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if it is takes the person the other way around find them in guidance or misguidance and then it increase them in disobedience, take them away from uh, obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it becomes a punishment. So it's serious to understand these two. Allah Can we give the judgment? Usually people used to, those who are not affected by the calamity, they use, they are free to give the judgment that this has happened because they just pointed out something happened in the society. Right, that's what I, I mentioned earlier. I said uh, none of us is receiving revelation uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot give a definite answer to say because a group of people in a, one particular country, they are engaged into a certain type of sins that are explicitly prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If calamity strikes them, we cannot sit in our own corners and start making judgment on that. Because at the end of the day, we don't know in which state they will die. And uh, yes, we can assume, because the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the hadith is in the presentation, he said, when people stop living by the standard, the code of conduct Allah SWT has set, they, when there is oppression, people's rights are taken unlawfully. When people are engaged into uh, riba, when people are engaged into all these major sins combined together, yes, the punishment of Allah SWT will come to uh, these people. But you don't know when and in which form. You cannot determine okay is a flood that will affect the people you cannot de determine no it's an earthquake you cannot determine no it's a uh, is a wind for for those reasons we abstain from making judgment when we see this our response is to make dua or we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for not being affected by that and seek for more protection and this is uh, the attitude of a believer when we see these calamities strikes we're hoping this is a test so we stay patient but at the same time we're fearing this could be a punishment for something i did that allah has struck me with this 
to send you as a reminder and uh, you will know that yes the brother uh, i don't know if uh, okay uh, the brother is saying if we can take this as uh, to balance our hope and fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes because if this calamity is strike we are i mean we are exempt we are not affected by them but we take them as a sign as a warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then we are hoping by giving away the sins and reforming ourselves going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are going away from his punishment but then we are hoping for his reward for abandoning the sins and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said nobody will abandon a sin for the sake of Allah except Allah will reward him and replace what he has lost for something better which one we take it is routine caution by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it not is only, not only one part of the world almost all part of the world wherever it happens whether it's in your area or in somewhere else in another area it is the same because it's affecting human being like you it could be you if people are affected by a tsunami in indonesia like now if people in japan they are affected by typhoon flooding and we were affected in hong kong uh, in few few weeks back by a major typhoon so the signs or the phenomena may change from one area to another some other people are affected by drought there is no rain for many years they cannot engage into farming and they are hungry there is no water and is so it, forth is it a suffering or it's a blessing or it's a routine thing that may go on well just to warn the people that allah alam these things we don't know we cannot give a definite answer so to say this is a punishment or we the third option also third Also. third option is so what bring and the blessings or the routine jazakumullah <laughs> khairan alaykum assalam wa rahmatullah we need to we need to